My name is Kate Harrison and this is The Life of a Writer. I've lived all over the place, both as a child but also um, as an adult. I've worked and lived in Bristol and Reading, Birmingham, London. When I became a full-time writer, I had, in theory, a bit of freedom, although my partner still works in London, so we needed to be somewhere fairly close. So we thought we'd try living in Brighton because it's just a really colourful, lively place. Not just the people, so anything goes here, I think. It's nice to feel part of a place that is lively and exciting and that people want to come to. One. The first email from my sister arrives on the morning of her funeral. I'm a novelist. I write for teenagers. They're supernatural thrillers um, with an online element. And I also write for adult, mainly women. And they're stories about women's lives, contemporary fiction. I can't stop it. It's a bit of an addiction. Although there are lots of stories of writers spending the day in their pyjamas. Not a good thing for me. So I will get dressed. I am fueled by coffee, so I can't do anything before coffee. And I will do my commute, which is about four steps, into my spare bedroom, which doubles as my office. And I generally do do a bit of social networking, first of all, as well. And then I will have my word count for the day. Might be a thousand words. I will try to get done before I do anything else. I will also have loads of other things to do, so I might be looking at um, covers for new books or I might be going in to have a meeting about publicity, writing some features for a new book that's coming up. And actually that's quite good because I've got a fairly short attention span, so it's quite good to have lots of things. I find that I'm better if I'm busier. There's an element of being a bit of an outsider, so you're always observing and as you watch people I think it's natural then to get a sense of their characters. When I was at school nobody I knew in my social groups or anywhere was a writer. I thought they were these mysterious creatures that always went to Oxford and Cambridge, you know, came from a family of writers and so it wasn't something that I thought I'd be able to do to become a published fiction writer. So the nearest thing I could come up with was to become a journalist and so I trained as a journalist, a print journalist and then moved into TV. But there was always that element of me that wanted the freedom of fiction and then it was actually a Christmas, I think it's no accident, when I had a bit of downtime I had an idea around school reunions because Friends Reunited was a big craze at the time. But I wrote that book in three months. And that was the start of it, really. I wrote it, finished it, and then started the work of trying to get it published. I have a lot of ideas, and they're really random. And some of them are really good, and some of them are terrible. And often when I have the idea, I can't tell the difference. So there has to be a bit of a fermentation process to see where it's going to go, and whether it's going to be one that will work out or not. Mine tend to come from conversations, from people I see, from the juxtaposition of things, really. I did ask a few of my writer friends to talk a bit about what the life of a writer entails. Uh, their own comments, so I've got a few here. We tell lies for money, that when writing is going well, it's the best feeling in the world, and when it's not, it's torture. That's true. Procrastination is an art form in its own right, definitely. I think that because writers know that in a lot of cases they're envied by the rest of the world, they don't like to moan in public, but they also know that, like anyone, you want to get together and have a bit of a whinge about deadlines or editing. And that has been a real lifesaver for me and many writers, um, both online but also face to face. So I wrote books while I was working full time for the first three novels because I know that for me, if I'd given up work straight away, I would have been crushed and terrified and frozen, unable to write again because it's a huge responsibility knowing you're gonna to have to pay your bills by doing something you love. 
So the first thing I would do is say, don't give up the day job. Actually gives you more freedom. If you're a writer, then even writing a hundred words, it's a start. It's gonna get you to a novel sooner or later. I think the other thing is don't expect it to be perfect straight away. The thing with writing is that because everyone's done it, they've all written essays at school or written a letter or an email, there's an assumption that they'll just sit down at their desk and be able to do it. And actually it is a skill and a craft as well as about inspiration. And part of that is learning to be easy with yourself, to experiment, to work around what you want to write. You might sit down writing something with a love story at its heart and find that you really want to be writing about zombies. And that's fine because you shouldn't fake it. This is a file that um, is the project that I'm working on at the moment, which is um, a book called The Last Gift, which is about uh, true love and uh, organ donation. <laughs> so um, there's quite a lot of research in that because it's medical. So I've had to do quite a lot of work and I've um, done lots of interviews. And this is my sort of handy reference file that I keep along with lots of books. I think that the longer you write, the more you almost become a bit scared. It should get easier, but on the other hand, you're feeling like, oh, can I do it again? And a lot of my writing life is composed of trying to think of ways of tricking myself into thinking it'll be okay. I like to keep testing myself by writing perhaps more than one person's story. So in this new one, I've potentially got three people's stories interwoven. They're connected, but not very obviously. So I've been trying to work out on one board with magnets where, where each bit goes and to move them around. If you love something enough, you will find the time to do it, if that means giving up your EastEnders habit or putting the Do Not Disturb sign on the door, whether you're, you know, dressmaking, an artist, a writer, whatever it is. I want my books, even if they're just entertaining, to make a kind of a difference to people's lives. And probably I shouldn't apologise for entertaining people because I think it's a really noble cause. Um, and if you make them think a little bit as well at the end of the day, then that's a good day's work done as far as I'm concerned. Yeah.